A popular chemistry demonstration is to combine calcium carbide and water to make a settling gas to instantly carve a pumpkin. But I always wanted to know what would happen if the pumpkin wasn't already carved. Would the pumpkin pop like a balloon? To find out, I drilled a hole in a pumpkin, poured in some water, added calcium carbide, lit the fuse, and was kind of disappointed. I tried carving out the bottom of the pumpkin to increase the combustion chamber, but all I got was a pop. Then I tried slicing it everywhere to weaken the pumpkin, but all it did was split around the middle. I knew something was missing, but I wasn't sure what. I started over by researching calcium carbide. It first became available in 1892 when Thomas Wilson accidentally discovered a method to manufacture it. It was widely used in acetylene lamps because they didn't need electricity, which at that time wasn't widely available. But it wasn't until 1930 when Swedish Nobel Prize winner Gustav Dahlian patented a storage method for acetylene gas that it became safe and easy to transport. That meant commercial access to acetylene without having to store and convert calcium carbide. Dalian's invention was to fill acetylene bottles with a porous material that would allow the acetylene to be pressurized without exploding. I use this bottle of acetylene for welding, but today we're going to use it to figure out why our pumpkin didn't burst. If I fill a balloon with pure acetylene and light it, it makes a sizable fireball. But if I do it again with a little oxygen, the combustion is almost instant. That's because acetylene, like any hydrocarbon, requires an oxidizer such as oxygen to burn. When we burn acetylene by itself, it has to pull the oxygen from the air, which is mostly nitrogen. That slows the burn rate way down. It's not until we add pure oxygen that it burns fast and hot enough to melt and cut steel. So if we want our pumpkin to pop like that balloon, we've got to speed up the reaction with more oxygen than the atmosphere has to offer. To accomplish this, I'm hauling my welder out to the field to test my theory. Now folks, don't try this at home. If you do a web search for acetylene injuries, you'll see it has the power to destroy a truck and you along with it. I spent weeks preparing for this experiment and had layers of safety precautions to minimize the chance of injury. And my original question was what would happen to an uncarved pumpkin, so I drilled three holes, one for the fuse and two others to let the gases in and out. I made several attempts, but the results were no different than with the calcium carbide. I moved on to carving the pumpkin from the bottom like before, and the results were way more promising. Our first attempts with the calcium carbide was creating pure acetylene inside the pumpkin, so there wasn't any oxygen to help it burn and what little puffs we could get out of there was what little bit of trace oxygen was in it. Of course, then when it split open, you could see that fireball coming out where it finally found the oxygen to help it burn. And this time, of course, with the oxyacetylene setup, we were able to get that perfect mix of fuel and oxygen, and you can see the results <laughs> were pretty catastrophic. But of course, no science experiment is really worth anything unless you can repeat it. And fortunately, we have plenty of pumpkins. So uh, yeah, let's see if we can do this again. Okay, let's be honest. That was not as big as the last one. The top did split some, but it basically popped right off. So for the final attempt, my dad suggested I try tapering the plug for a better seal. That would ensure any pressure inside the pumpkin would enhance the seal rather than just escape. 
Now, I have to admit, after the first two attempts, I was tempted to move in closer to give my high-speed camera a better view, but I had a written safety procedure and was determined to follow it. Boy, am I glad I did. I honestly don't know whether it was the tapered plug, finding the exact mix of acetylene, or the moisture inside the pumpkin, but the lesson is clear. Experiments like this are totally unpredictable. Not only did it destroy the pumpkin, it flattened the plastic container and totaled one of my tripods. One piece of pumpkin went straight for my high-speed camera tripod, though fortunately didn't do any damage. Of course, I was safely behind a barrier right where I planned to be. Now you've probably seen videos on YouTube filling all manner of balloons and bags with flammable gases, but in almost every case, someone in the comments tells how static electricity set theirs off while filling it, leaving them with severe burns and hearing loss or worse. But don't take it from me, take it from Gustav Dahlian. The very guy who invented the safe storage of acetylene was himself blinded by an acetylene explosion. If he wasn't immune to accidents, then none of us are. Folks, I don't know if you could tell, but that video took a monumental effort to produce. So if you want to see more great content like that, then please like, subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video. Hi, how'd you do? <laughs>